Today we celebrate the feast of St. Peter's Chair at Rome, and just a little bit of a background behind it. We know that uh, when St. Peter was made the first Roman pontiff, the first pope, I should say, then he was eventually imprisoned by Herod Agrippa. And then after the two angels had come and miraculously helped him to escape, and he, he did just that, went through all the gates and was free, it says that he gathered all of the faithful there together and he told them certain, certain words. And then all it says in the book of the Acts of the Apostle is that he went to another place. And by tradition, we believe that that place on that occasion to which he, he then went to was the great city of Rome. And that would be where all the popes after St. Peter would have their chair. And so that is the feast we celebrate today. But we also today open up the octave of the chair of unity. It's a time, the eight days in which we pray for different classes of non-Catholics, each day a different group of non-Catholics. For instance, on one day we pray for the conversion of Jews, on another pagans and heathens, and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. But as we do this prayer, remember to include your own intentions as well. God knows that we all have some family members who are still outside of our Lord's flock. But never be discouraged. No matter how long it takes for them to convert, no matter what you try to do for them, never be discouraged. Why? Because the Nativity. Our Lord came for one reason, to convert people to t bring them to the truth, and to the true faith, and ultimately to bring them to heaven. In his nativity, on that first Christmas night, he revealed himself to the Jews, but it was on the Epiphany when he revealed himself to the Gentiles, and that is when he would begin to bring in the first converts to the Christian faith. What a beautiful thing that all our Lord did his whole life long was to bring in souls to his flock. He would suffer and he would shed his blood for them. Have you ever thought what more there is that you could do to convert your family members, your friends, or the people that you just are, fr are acquaintances with? It always seems that when we try to convert them, we want to do so by word speaking to them, explaining to them the faith. And sometimes we speak until we're blue in the face. And it does no good whatsoever. All the more so now that we're in that great apostasy of St. Paul that he speaks of in, in one of the books of sacred scripture. No one will listen to truth anymore. They turn their ears to fables. But... The curia of ours was once talking to another priest who had a parish nearby, and the priest was com complaining to the curé, well, my parishioners aren't doing so well, and this, that, and the other thing. And he said, the curé did, he said, well, good father, have you ever scourged yourself for them? That's the key to conversions. It's not how well you can say something. For a conversion to work, you must have grace. The grace needs to be there before they'll be able to be moved by anything you say. The difference is in this. Prayer united with penance. That's how you'll convert souls. Offering up the life of our infant Savior who is eternal Father for the salvation of souls. So tonight and throughout this entire octave, let this be your practice, your devotion, to pray and to do penance for those who are yet today outside of our Lord's true church. This is how you'll save your soul, uh, their souls. And you know what our Lord says, if you save one soul, you have already saved your own. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.